KATV. And thanks for spending part of your Sunday morning with us. On August 10th, President Donald Trump said that America's opioid crisis is a national emergency and that we're going to spend a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money on the crisis. The people of Washington County, Pennsylvania, have been dealing with this national crisis on the local level for some time now. Is progress being made and what resources are available both to treat victims and to prosecute those who are distributing opioids? We welcome back Eugene Vitone, District Attorney for Washington County, who has made the fight against opioid addiction a major part of his law enforcement duties. Also joining us is Eric Kerno, Clinical Director for the Washington County Drug and Alcohol Commission. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank it's always you, good, Gene, to have good, you on. Good to see Thank you again. For Thank the, you for the, having the, us. The good work you guys are doing in Washington County. There's no doubt that we have an opioid crisis. Everybody knows that. But I think some people are unclear exactly what opioids are. We're not just talking criminal elements, are we? No. Um, the, the, the epidemic that we're dealing with is actually the uh, result, looking at it from about 10,000 feet, of two major things going on. Uh, the overprescription of opioid medications, pain medications. Let's stop right there because and, I think okay, people go really don't always understand that. The fact is that Americans, law abiding, decent Americans at every economic level, from poor to rich, from urban to suburban to rural, use too much painkillers. Well, there's a, there's a lot of pain medication out there, and certainly uh, we consume of I believe the figure is upwards of 80 to 90 percent of the opioid pain relievers in the world, in the United States, with, with a much smaller percentage of the population. I mean, it is a so. serious problem because I know that any time we have an ailment, we want to call our doctor for pain relief. Sure. And that's how the problem begins, getting hooked on pain medication. Yes. That's one side of it. 75 percent of the people that are seeking treatment, I believe the figure is, uh, start with opioid pain medication. That's where they began. And then uh, legitimately Mr. prescribed. Right. And then the other side, Mr. District Attorney, is one that you're right in the middle of, which is the cr criminal side. of Right. This. Um, Tell us about in that. In Washington County right now, the uh, the the uh, the problems changed. Uh, right. If you're acquiring heroin in Washington County, or in fact in southwestern Pennsylvania, you're probably getting fentanyl. That's what we're seeing. These are fentanyl analogs. It's not a pharmaceutical grade fentanyl. It's coming in from China. Um, I know Senator Toomey's been very involved in trying to uh, work on stopping that uh, flood of those drugs coming in, but they're coming in through the mail, and that's what's being sold right now on the streets in uh, Washington County. That stuff is very dangerous because one, it's it's an analog. It's not. It, these are drugs that haven't been tested on human beings before, mm. and the other thing is it's so much cheaper. Uh, the prices have actually gone down. I was talking uh, um, last week with um, an individual who had overdosed uh, uh, when we debriefed him, and uh, he had uh, recently purchased bags for as low as five dollars a bag. Wow! Which and is, these drugs are, are uh, coming. I, I guess there was a raid recently in the West End from Hong Kong. Yes, uh, from... Pittsburgh had one last week, I believe, where the federal authorities seized uh, fentanyl that uh, originated in Hong Kong. Wow. So a lot of this is originating in China. Uh, India, it's coming into our borders either through express mail or through the cartels right. with uh, Canada and Mexico. So, right. Right. It's, well, that's, uh, so it's a it's, huge problem. So, yeah, clearly it's a huge problem. And Eric, you're right in the middle of trying to find solutions and helping people uh, through these, this crisis. What are the resources that are available to people today uh, if they have, and if they, I guess, if someone can help them to identify that they have an opioid problem? Well, that's really the first step is to get people to acknowledge that this is an issue. Uh, when you have an opioid addiction, the, uh, the denial factor is very high. So to I'm get sure people to true. come to terms with the fact that this is something that's really taken over their life can be the first challenge. Uh, we do have a number of resources in terms of treatment facilities and medically assisted treatment options that uh, an ever growing number of those types of resources. Uh, statewide, but certainly right. that we are connected to in Washington County that allow us to connect people once they're assessed with the appropriate resources, the appropriate level of care, and in many cases even the appropriate provider of that care. If we suspect that a member of our family 
you know, beyond ourselves. I mean, as you, as you rightly say, self-denial is very much there. But if we think that a member of our family is addicted to pain medications or is engaged in some kind of illegal behavior, what should we do? Well, the first thing you need to do is to take a look at overdose prevention practices. So to get your hands on uh, Narcan or Naloxone would be my first recommendation. Right. That way, if you find your loved one unresponsive, uh, after you call 911, you can properly administer a dose of Naloxone. It's life-saving medication. Right. It's specifically designed to reverse overdose deaths and that alone. And so that would be priority number one. Priority number two would be to connect with agencies like mine, uh, your single county authority, and treatment providers to see what resources are available. Typically, treatment providers right. are going to want to speak to the individual who's suffering from the overdose right. and the opioid use disorder that's, that's, in order to get uh, things moving. All good advice. Uh, Gene, let me ask you, maybe this is controversial. I know you're going after the bad guys. You always sure. have. Sure. But what about doctors who overprescribe? Well, Do we have... I mean, can you take legal action against what, that? What we've done, and uh, it's, it's worked out very well, and this started with U.S. Attorney David Hickton, and it was a great idea uh, at that time, and we're still pursuing this with uh, acting U.S. Attorney Sue Song. She's uh, been wonderful in letting us keep this going. I have an uh, assistant district attorney that's cross-designated as a U.S. attorney. So he's able to pursue cases in both state court and federal court. A lot of the, uh, the prosecutions involving physicians um, are brought in federal court. That's mainly because you not only have uh, DEA-type violations, which are violations of uh, uh, federal drug laws, but you also have uh, the, the payment that's related to Medicare or other right. insurance providers right. that they have the, uh, the ability sure. to enforce. Is, is there a so, con there's a consciousness among the medical community right. that they, they bear a responsibility of this. Yes, the medical community has been responding to this. They've, uh, they've increased uh, training practices with new physicians. Um, they've, uh, we've implemented the PMDP, the Prescription Drug uh, database statewide, which has been a great help in helping providers identify who's getting what so you I've, don't I've have got them doubling up. I've got 20 seconds left, so quick answer from each of you. What is your most significant need right now? More money, more what? Uh, our most significant need right now is funding for treatment. Uh, we're working in the jail right now on a Vivitrol program that shows great promise, so that's, that's one thing. Eric, you agree with that? Uh, I would agree funding is always something we need, but we also need an increase in understanding from the community at large that this sure. isn't a criminal issue. It's a public health crisis. Yeah. Well said, and, and a great way to end this uh, segment. Thank you, gentlemen, sure. both for the good work you're thank doing. You, John. Gene, it's I always good to have it. you on, it's Eric. Good. Thank Pleasure. you again for everything you do for the good community. You, we appreciate sir. it. Thank you. When the Sunday business page continues, 20 years along Pittsburgh's rivers is certainly something to quack about. The story of Just Ducky 